<laughs> All right. Um, so we're here to talk about graphite. Um, as, as most of you know, graphite is our uh, high-level loop optimizer, high-level loop transformation subsystem. Um, it was uh, well. It has all you know. All your classic loop optimizations. Uh, it, when we first, or let me rephrase that. When uh, Sebastian started first started working on graphite and and presented it to the GCC project as a whole, um, we saw it as providing an entire loop nest optimizer. We saw it as providing a framework where we could start tackling vectorization problems, auto parallelization problems. Um, Accelerator issues. Believe it or not, we actually thought about it from, in, from an accelerator standpoint six years ago. <clears throat> and the, the desire was to build a loop nest optimization framework on top of well known, well understood polyhedral algorithms. Um, and when we got to 2000, so the, this was first proposed in 2006. Um, it took about three years to get to the code ready at the point where we were ready to integrate it into GCC. And it went into GCC in uh, 2009 for GCC 4.4. Um, from 4.4 to 4.8, we've seen two significant code drops out, out of the Graphite project. Um, both were, were major updates in terms of the, the Graphite code itself and also in terms of dependent libraries that Graphite builds upon. Uh, there's the Klug library, which deals with, with blocking and, and uh, Analysis necessary to, to do loop, high level loop transformations, and then the integer set library. <clears throat> um, also, as, when we went into 4.8, there was the addition of Pluto, which is uh, further analysis of transformation code. Um, but we did not get in um, the, SCOP, the new SCOP code. And the reason I wanted to get a little bit of the background is once we hit 4.8, everything stopped. There has been no work on graphite beyond. Maintenance, and when I say by maintenance, somebody makes an infrastructure change that would change from uh, GCC's one-of-a-kind hash tables to C++ hash tables. Graphite got updated. That is it. That is all we've seen in 4.8. Furthermore, uh, Sebastian, um, who, who is the lead architect, uh, he's now working on LLVM. <laughs> <laughs> Tobias is, has a PhD to work on. And, and maybe working on LLVM. I'm not sure about the latter. <laughs> uh, can you confirm or deny? Oh, I can confirm I have a PhD going on. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, li I like your answer. <laughs> um, the, the other person who has expressed an interest in, in, in um, graphite in terms of, of maintenance uh, has been Richard Beener. But as you all know, Richard Beener has an enormous amount of work on his plate just in terms of day-to-day -day GCC maintenance. And, and I think if we look at, at what's going on in the last year, um, aside from just keeping it running, we're not moving forward. And in 2011, uh, AMD is no longer, as of 2011, AMD is no longer uh, backing improvements to the graphite infrastructure. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, and if we look back, so Richie did a boff on, on Graphite last year, and he raised certain concerns about, uh, is Graphite giving us what we really want? Is it really helping performance? It has all the classical transformations, but are we doing what we need them? Are we doing them sometimes when we don't? Um, and the, the, the overall impression was, it's not giving us what we want. <clears throat> um, and uh, other concerns, the, po the polyhedral code, uh, it, it's memory intensive, it's compile time intensive. Um, and in fact, I, I had a, a bug that got dropped on my plate as we were approaching the 4.8 release where what looked like a fairly simple loop nest was taking you know, gigabytes of memory in, in the ISL libraries. And you know, I don't know anything about graphite. I don't know anything about ISL. And I couldn't even find where, the clamps, where, where to put clamps to try to minimize the damage. <clears throat> Um, and Richie, and this is a quote from Richie, uh, graphite is considered unmaintained. That was a year ago. Um, that's the kind of thing that worries me. <laughs> um, sorry, wrong direction. So near the end of Richie's boff last year, which, which you know, some of you I hope, I hope attended, um, he called for you know, somebody help. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, there hasn't been any. Um, there were, he, he, said, you know, he hinted that there might be 
uh, some, some code sharing, some idea sharing with LLVM. I'm not seeing any of that. And as, as I mentioned, very little has happened to Graphite you know, in, in the last year. And the, the guys who are most likely to help us with the, the issues <laughs> are doing other things. Um, and, and, and that's just, you know, it's, it's not a, a slam, it's just reality. You've got, you know, your, your own things going on. Um, and so it leaves me with a question, what in the world are we going to do? Do we have anybody that, that can take on Graphite, that can uh, do the analysis, do the development so that it can be our long-term loop nest optimizer infrastructure? Because I know I can't. I've, I've got my own things and, and I quite frankly I don't understand the, the polyhedral stuff. I just don't and, and I don't have the time to learn it. Um, but we need, if, if this code is going to stay in GCC, if, so let's, let's ponder a port. If we had a port with no maintainer, what would we do with it? Deprecate. We kick it out. Graphite's a little different. <laughs> you know, a port, you know, just affects the port. Graphite affects everything that uses graphite. So is that, you know, kick it out policy, is that the right policy for, for something that was, that sits in, a, you know, in the middle of our optimization pipeline? We've never, we've never been in this situation before where we have a, a large piece of infrastructure that's unmaintained um, that we don't, you know, we, we're not convinced it's really helping us. <clears throat> Are there other approaches to moving that stuff the uh, there's, there's all the classic approaches which you, you kind of write by hand <laughs> and you can spend a, a career doing them <laughs> and they have always turned out to be highly fragile um, and that was one of the appeals of the polyhedral model was that uh, there, there would be this external engine that we feed so, so the way Graphite works is it takes Gimple, turns it into um, a, an IL that, that is understood by Klug, and passes it off. Klug munches on it for a while, comes back with something, and then we translate it back into Gimple. That is the basic model, right? <laughs> I'm not saying anything that, that's horribly, horribly wrong. Um, and so that, that was the appeal. We could, we could hand this thing off to Klug, and we wouldn't have to think about the, the math behind how you do these transformations. <laughs> Because it is, I mean, people have written books about it. They're very dense, very hard to understand. Um, so that, that's kind of how the, the, the two approaches. By hand, every, tr every transformation. Um, the SGI guys, they, they all make careers out of this stuff. <laughs> um, or you, you do something like, like Graphite. Um, and, excuse me? The, the Klug library is maintained, the ISL library is maintained. It's really our graphite bits, the bits that go in and out that, that are problematical. Where's the hard math? Is it inside the libraries? Yeah, the hard math is inside the libraries. So we, you wouldn't technically have to understand it? No, no. If, 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 if we can find a, somebody to maintain graphite within GCC, yeah, we don't have to understand the, the guts of the library. And that's the, that's the value of, of using Kluk and, and ISL. We don't, right. we don't want to understand that stuff. But is the problem with graphite and the main problem that it is not getting us what we wanted to do, problem of not feeding the libraries properly, or does that actually, improving on that, does, does it, would that require the knowledge of the transformation? Both. Right. At least I, I believe it's both. And, and maybe, you know, I, I know you guys were looking at it um, at, at one point. The, the guys that, that can best answer the question are actually right over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm not meaning to call you out, but, you know. So, give some, some perspective on what you said. So, so um, just, just to give you kind of like the, 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 the idea, impression like we have from Graphite. So first of all, I, I fully agree. It's kind of like Sebastian is doing something else. I'm actually like, I really like coding, but like I have someone in behind me who says you need to do the research, write papers. <laughs> um, That's life. <laughs> so um, in, in that sense, like um, Graphite in terms of being unmaintained, um, that's unfortunately true. Mm -hmm. Like there's still like a thing we're still staying standing there as a maintainer, but um, like in terms of like what you want from a, like you want to have a bug report and then you want someone to sit down and, and spend a day or two on those bugs. Um, but this is very difficult for, for us yeah. to have. Yeah, and, and more important, you know, to do the analysis to see you know what is it about this this system that's not giving us what we want. Is it what we feed into Klug? Is it how we translate it back when it comes back out of, out of, out of Klug and ISL? And, and at least I don't know where, where the issues are. There is a um, What Graphite can do is not um, advertised enough. Mm -hmm. So we don't know, well, the GC community does not know what Graphite can do. Yeah. And that's also a problem. Okay. It, it is still seen as, uh, you know, 
is such kind of thing. It's not that you have home, you know, this is going to be my point of view. But it doesn't look, you know, robust enough to use it. It is uh, well enough, rob robust enough. Uh, we throw that it uh, a lot of codes and uh, we fixed all the bugs. We're down to 15 bugs now mm -hmm. that are open. And I'm still triaging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not too uh, There yeah. are bugs that, uh, that got fixed in, uh, in between, uh, in, uh, in the past two years. Uh, right. So right. were the bugs in the library, were the bugs in the transformation to the library I.O.? No. Bugs yes. can be uh, in, in between uh, uh, compile time issues and uh, uh, ICs. Uh, the ICs mostly in our, in our misuse of the ICF and libraries and things like that. Because so I remember working on a bug for for a, it might have been the same book. Just send me a private email. Okay. And yeah. I got to a point that it looks like the library is doing something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody knew. And I couldn't get yeah. to them. So, so this is actually one of the points I want to like kind of like we, 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 we clarify that we kind of we are not available busy doing something else. But that's actually like kind of like one of the very last things we kind of did one of the bigger code drops before we disappeared. <laughs> was was basically uh, so so basically one of the ideas we had with graphite and and, and and all that stuff is that like the the very complex mathematical stuff is actually not happening in graphite. Mm -hmm. Graphite by itself is actually a, not a very clever thing. It just translates from GIMP to to this polyhedral stuff and hands it off. And so basically, like Fluke and ISL are very very well-maintained libraries, and there's like Sven, for example, is like one of the old polyhedral but he actually like, you write him a bucket report about his tools, and if it's, like, he's gonna fix it within a day or within a week at most. And so, um, basically most of the intelligence, most of the, 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 the stuff that needs to, more, most of the transformations actually happen outside of graphite. And even if it makes the impression that nothing is going on in graphite, basically when we are updating ISO to, to a new release, there's actually a lot of stuff coming into Graphite without ever changing GCC code. That, that's a so, good point, yeah. So, so Graphite being unmaintained or not, like this, just at the moment, the problem with Graphite at the moment is not that the, the infrastructure is unstable or incomplete. Actually, if not, nothing is going on there, it's just because there's not a lot that needs to be done in Graphite at the moment. What we really, like, the problem we have at the moment with Graphite is we need to make it like, well, like, there are a couple of bugs that needs to be fixed, and some of them, like, with the ISL, it's basically, it's, for the Hedro stuff, it's very, very easy to write a test case that kind of explodes, just because you have a very, very, you have a lot of power, of, like, in terms of the details you can make and the analysis, so you, um, well, that can happen, but this can, can be solved, or, like, you just bail out at some point. But um, the problem with graphite is, like, um, Basically, you need to drive the, the optimizations. And most of the time, we actually spent the years to, to develop <coughs> Graphite was to get the infrastructure there. And just like right before, can the last big code drop like brought this um, Bluetooth li um, optimizer mm -hmm. to Graphite. And this was actually the very, like, the first time like one, one an optimization that actually takes advantage of the Polyhedral model was placed into Graphite. Mm -hmm. And even this optimization is still untuned. And so, um, that's where like most of the work would need to go. Like you would be, you would need to have a test case where you say, okay, this one needs to be optimized. This should there should be a loop transformation that makes this happen. Mm -hmm. And in fact, those test cases can be easily reported. You don't even need to report them. Like you can report them to GCC, but you can also directly report them to Sven or to like any of the like polyhedral experts, not even part of the GCC community. And they can figure out how to optimize them. And the nice thing about Graphite is even if it's unmaintained and doesn't do a lot, like as soon as you figure out how to optimize this in ISL or if you fix the performance heuristic there, um, it will immediately port to, to, to GCC. Right, right. So it, it almost sounds like the, the, the issue with, with, at least at a high level, the issue that we've got is what are we feeding into Klug and, and how are we handling translation back out? If we're not giving Kluge something that, that it can digest and, and you know, build its models around, then we're not going to get anything back that's going to be all that useful. Um, 
and, and maybe, maybe that's where the, the, you know, the big missing piece is. Are, are we feeding Clude something that, that it's prepared to handle and will give us good code out of it? And you know, we, I, the problem is we just don't know. And this is actually uh, some way also, like, I think, a difficult question. Mm -hmm. like, for me, I actually don't know what good code is. Okay. Like, like, I, like, I have a couple of, like, several graphic back reports about, um, like, I, I sees and, like, crashes and long compile time, but um, what I would actually be interested in is to see a back report about um, yeah, performance troubles or, like, missed optimization, where mm -hmm. you say, okay, this is a loop nest that I look at it and it's clear how it should look like, why doesn't like, what doesn't give that any benefit? Right, right. Because this really depends on the use, ca your use cases, your, your, like your, your, your memory model, all, your, like all, all that stuff. stuff. Yeah, your, your cache on, coherent. Yeah. And honestly, Graphite has like this Pluto stuff, which is well, was pretty successful in research and actually was implemented in IBM Excel. So it it actually does several times like it does something useful, but this is just like one kind of generic optimization, which obviously does. Like it doesn't reach most of the cases, and so that's I think like if if there anybody's interested in such optimizations, I think the the first thing would be to to like report performance mm -hmm. or like missed optimization perhaps to yeah see what what, what people need and then and, and I think this would be the point where you can figure out if graphite is useful because you see okay there are missed optimization bugs and like there are five where we can say okay graphite doesn't actually help like we have no idea how to optimize it. Um, then, then really graphite is not useful. Yeah. Well, may, so maybe what, what maybe what you're arguing is that from a maintainer, at least right now, we need somebody that is willing to, to step up and look at or look for cases that we think should be optimized that aren't being optimized. And yeah. maybe, maybe that's maybe that's what we need from a maintainer right now. Because because you know, kind of as you said, right now the graphite code is not causing problems. It's not like it's in there core dumping every day. It, it for the most part works. Yes, David. The issue, from my perspective, is that we've had a, a lot of sort of semi-started efforts at high-level loop optimization. Mm -hmm. that. So, I mean, I mean, yes, graphite, un unfortunately, you know, never really sort of got to the point where it was very useful. I mean, it, I believe that it has the potential for being better than what we had before, though it didn't you know, cover all of that. But in some sense, like, is it okay, you know, Graphite, you know, doesn't trigger a lot. It's not doing anything. But then it's a question: Well, what do you do? Who's going to do the other simpler, better, whatever other thing? So, to me, it's it's not a matter of oh, okay. I mean, yes, there, there's a lot to be left to be desired. And I think personally, one thing that was you know, given the way that open source communities work, that Graphite was sort of um, I mean, not not the wrong way. That, that there there was a long lead time. To get mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. and benefit from it, and instead of, I mean, for instance, I mean, I mean not necessarily that I, you know, well, that what IBM did, for instance, with the auto vectorizer and even the, the register, I mean, the new uh, register alloc, I mean, I'm sorry, the new is scheduler, the, I mean, the hyphen scheduler a while ago was to get sort of preliminary end to end, of, I mean, not a prototype, but a simplistic, simplistic subset of this stuff works and grow out from there as opposed to. Let's get all the infrastructure, and all the base, and all the framework in person. Then we'll start doing it. Yeah. So if you don't, if for a lot of open source developers, if they don't see an end-to-end -end benefit in the initial stuff, then it's sort of okay. It doesn't work, right? It doesn't care, and they won't build it. Where if it's okay, it works, but if this is my test case, then they'll fix that. They'll fix that. So it was sort of had the wrong feedback mechanism. The way that it went. Maybe it did. You know, I I, I didn't follow it closely. I'll, I'll be very blunt. You know, graphite was something that was out of my space. And, and, and actually, I still don't follow closely. The reason I got this boff <laughs> was because I, I, I got this bug in the 4.8 time frame, and I, I kind of looked at it, didn't get very far with it. And I said to Richie, well, it seems like you have an interest in it. <laughs> Maybe we should have a boff about it. And then I found out that Richie's wife was pregnant. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> you know, in the end, what I want, um, well, there's the, you know, motherhood and apple pie. I want the best performing code we can get out of, out of GCC. Um, if, I, if I think specifically about graphite, um, I, I want a, a high level loop nest optimizer. And when we, we think about what are the, what are the possibilities, what's the, 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 the kind of the, 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 the range of what we could do? One, we could stay where we are and, and, and iterate on graphite. 
That, that's a very valid option, and, and I've got no problem with that if somebody wants to go in and, and go that direction. On the other scale would be you pull it out. Okay? All right, let's pretend we pull it out. And three years down the line, all right, we're going to work on a loopness optimizer. You know what you end up building? Graphite. <laughs> um, so it doesn't seem like it's actually a step forward. <laughs> um, so, and again, that's why when, when I said, you know, we, we, for a port, we would have just cut it out. But this is not a port. This is something very different. Um, and so that's why, you know, so we're open this up for discussion about how to, how to move forward, how to find somebody that's willing to get inside this code and, and start giving the bug reports so that so we can make some improvements on it. So is it really get inside this code or am I misinterpreting it? Because it sounds to me like, um, yeah, it's, it's not, uh, it sounds like all the infrastructure and in, uh, interfaces are largely um, constant. It's a matter of how it's being used. Right, so when I say get inside, I mean uh, feed code into it. Is this, you know, this is something I, I think should be transformed. Is it not and why? So it, it's what you feed and what you get out. Um, benchmarking, saying, you know, and, and I know you, you guys did a lot of benchmarking at IBM and, and had some really good data. Um, you know, recreating that, getting to the point where we have data and can start looking at, at codes where we think this should be helping. Well, I mean, but I guess another question for you know, Tobias and, and is given the, the focus now on I mean, poly and LV, I mean, it's a common infrastructure, but. Who do we have that in the GCC community? I mean, if we just add these bug reports, I mean, do we think that things should behave completely for LLVM and GCC, and that if we had a bug report, then you would reproduce it in poly, and it's a common part of the code that needs to be fixed, or is this something where we really need sort of an owner on the GCC side who says, okay, we're going to build this common infrastructure in GCC, and then understand why GCC didn't provided in the right, you know. We got a cast in the wrong place, for God's sake, <laughs> which is apparently a common problem. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know if, if, if you know, in your, in your previous comment that, you know, a, a, a bug report or, you know, a missed optimization report in GCC saying, okay, this should be transformed, it's not being transformed. Is that, is there anybody, you know, is, is that something that, that the, you know, poly graphite community would be able to help solve in the GCC context. Or even if they can't solve it, at least tell us, you know, if, if, if we can give them the, the stuff they're sending into um, the polycode and say, here's what we sent into it, and we kind of expected this to come out, what happened? Did we send it something, you know, is there, is there something in there that, that, you know, we shouldn't have sent it? Just so, even just a, 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 a dialogue with, with them to help us move forward. Yeah, so, so I think that like we, we did this on a couple of bug reports, like it, it sometimes was very successful, sometimes it actually like we there was a harder problem, so it was not that so successful, but it always happens. But basically what I as I said, like the graphite code itself is actually pretty trivial. Mm -hmm. So if like someone experienced in GCC looks at some of the sec faults, like in, in many cases it's probably you guys would just sit down and get it fixed. There are cases that it doesn't work where you actually like there's just some something maybe for us very trivial, but maybe for like normal GCC work that focus on other stuff, it's not that trivial. <laughs> In that case, it's like we are, um, yeah, like I, I'm happy to like if someone CCs me on a bug report or if I see a bug report, I'm actually trying to look at it. Uh, okay. I must say I fail. <laughs> oh, no, no. This is, this like is not a. <laughs> but, but, um, but that's definitely an option. And yeah. Basically, like the, the connection between graphite and then the like libraries. Is a very very thin layer. It's very mm -hmm. easy to export a test case, and those test cases are easily reproducible between, like like GCC between LVM between our like source to source tools. Mm -hmm. So most of the cases are actually like, for example, like currently I work on my kind of research stuff on like kind of some automatic like C to GPU code generation like with mm -hmm. with like offloading and then memory management and all that stuff, and I develop all that in a like a C source to source compiler. It's just research, it doesn't do anything. But basically you can use all this stuff to, to kind of like just, just yeah, you just use libraries. And if someone would step up and say, okay, the research actually is useful at some point, implementing it in GCC is then not such a hard problem. Right. Like the thing is really, as you said, like you want to have a high level loop, loop optimizer. Um, on the, like for my, my question is why, for example. Mm -hmm. Like I see it's, 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 it's nice to have, but I think the, 
the best way to say why is because I have this test case and I know it gives speed ups. Mm -hmm. And I must say I'm a PhD student, I, like I worked a little on compilers, but I just don't have the experience and uh, the test cases to, to say, okay, that's the test case that matters for like most of the people in a compiler. Honestly, I don't know. I know a little <laughs> bit about polyhedral stuff, but I don't know what you care about. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, and, and for us, you know, what we care about is, is going to be based on a benchmark or a customer test case or, yeah. you know, what it, wh wherever it comes from. Um, you know, we don't, we don't typically go in with a, you know, we know this is the way to go. <laughs> it's, we get feedback, this does not perform the way it should, and we have to go in and look at it and, and tear that code apart and understand why it is not performing the way it should. Um, typically, when, when we're looking at, at loop nest optimizer, we're looking at improving the, the, the caching behavior of a series of nested loops. That, that is the simplest way to think about it. Right. Everything else is kind of in the margins. <laughs> So we, like you said, you, you, you'd like to have one. Mm -hmm. You actually have an input. Like, meaning, like, do you have a t customer or like a benchmark suite? Or do you, did anybody see GCC being not as good as it could be because of missing loop optimizations? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back 2000, yeah, for example, we has one, this one loop. Actually, I think 2006 still has, yeah. has this one loop that if you don't have the interchange, yeah. And well, but, and, but that's, I think, what, what we're missing is we don't have anybody that's doing that kind of analysis to say, this is where it's important, this is where it's important. We got, we've got one, I, we know there are lots of others. We just, gotta, we just have somebody, need somebody within this group to, to well, not necessarily just this group, but uh, with, within the GCC community as a whole to start owning the analysis and, and feeding stuff to you or, or, or to the, the larger community uh, on the Klug and, and ISL level. And, 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 and I'm okay with that as, as you know, our direction. Uh, it's, you know, we, we, keep in, we keep graphite in, and we need to start building those test cases, giving them to the, to the, to the, 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 the other community, and saying, why aren't we getting what we want out of this? Um, you know, as I said, you know, graphite is not, at this time, breaking things. It, it's not, it, it just kind of works. It just is not performing in the way we would like. And, You tell me. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, you can take into parallelization, you can take into accelerators, there's a whole lot you can do with that kind of infrastructure. Parallelization is already a plug with uh, the, uh, the code that generates over the P. So we have a flag that allows us to uh, look at the dependence graph in Graphite mm -hmm. and tag all those loops that are parallel. And then the uh, loop, well, the OpenMP code generator is going to take care of that. Cool. Or the vectorization <laughs> is not yet the case. But we could uh, do the same. Just tag the loops, make the vectorizer trust <laughs> these, uh, these, uh, these annotation. Uh, here we go. Well, uh, yeah, but, yeah, I perfectly agree. The, the question is, it, it's a simple matter of engineering. <laughs> 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 I know, but, but I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. I mean, I completely agree. It is that. I mean, the problem fundamentally is that you know, IBM and NVM were driving this and, and AMD, and AMD, you know, is, isn't focusing on this anymore for, for reasons IBM, you know, you know, refocus on it, and Albert is, you know, refocused now, you know, if any new university and focusing on LLVM for his infrastructure. So we just don't have the players who replace it. So I'm, I'm not being, you know, facetious in terms of simple matter of engineering, but I'm just saying that, you know, the people who were doing the implementation of this, you know, not, not for, you know, didn't abandon it for, for the, 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 we didn't think it was going to go anywhere, it wasn't useful, it was just a matter that, you know, we were pulled off on this yep, other project. Understand wholeheartedly, and and the problem I'm trying to solve is how do we how do we how do we move forward given that reality? That that's all I, no, I really I, care I, about. I also want to, to thank you know. Oh yeah. Oh Sebastian yeah. Sebastian for developing this policy in LVM in this having a, a unified 
infrastructure that can be used in both compilers. So it wasn't a matter of, okay, they sort of walk away, that there's something that we can you know, share this between the compilers, which is you know, a great thing that I would like other you know, parts of the compiler effort to be you know, as shareable and, and compatible as, as the approach they take it. Yep, absolutely. I, I certainly don't mean to. No, 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 no,
Well, no, in, take it independent of the polyhedral method. <laughs> Loops that are important to transform in and of themselves are, are extremely valuable. I know, but that, that's the question that I think Tobias is, is asking. There are two different things. One is just <laughs> so just loops as an example. Another is I think what he's saying is challenge. Is, is Here we go. <laughs> if you're a team who doesn't think polyhedral is actually useful, if you can find an example of we know it will be impossible or take you know you know where, where this is you know and be complete for polyhedral metric. Solve this loop, you know, and, and to, instead of just this abstract, oh, we don't think it's useful to instead concretely, I mean, separate from the Livermore loop, I, I can concretely so. say this is the type of loop that we think is would be useless for polyhedral, and then Chong, then the academics will say, ah, but we don't, you know, we can show you, and I think it devises that would motivate the so academics to solve it. There's a term called sweet 3D, and I doubt that this is a loop. Which I write, then it is a bars at all three, then at all two. Where it is a regression at all three, then at all two. Regression with respect to what? Well, when I compile with current GCC at all three, then it gets vectorized by the battery. So, so, what kind of high level loop transformation would you expect on this loop? Uh, uh, sorry. What kind of high-level ah. loop transformation yes. would you expect to be performed ah. on this loop? He just said it doesn't get vectorized. His problem. Yeah, no, that is that's separate from the from the loop transform. Yeah, that, that's a different 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 part of GCC. Well, but but but, but it, it is related in two cases because the question is right now he's saying this is not vectorized and, and right now we don't have. The vectorizer connected to the graphite. Right, graph. and, that, and that's what the, the, the yeah. issue I was going to bring up. If we can wire up the 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 the, the analysis that comes out of out of uh, Klug and, and ISL to say that these things don't alias, yeah. and 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 do a reduction on on the sum aspect of this, right. then then you can do something. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so so that's the separate question: Is would the analysis from ISL <laughs> and, and graphite be able to better vectorize this than we do now? But that's separate from the high level loop transformation. Mm -hmm. That can or cannot be done. That, that's a yeah. But you know what? If, if, if that's what we got out of it, that alone would make it yeah. worth it. Yes. I mean, maybe yeah. we're more interested in vectorization. <laughs> than oh, man. I, you know, I, I'm open to anything. <laughs> yeah. is, then it gets vectorized. Yeah. And uh, the vectorization is uh, bad because there are a lot of shuffles which counts if at these sizes by slower than if I. Uh, do it trivially by unrolling this rule. Yeah. Who, who can I follow up with? Me. <laughs> yeah, go, go, ben, ben, and Ben knows how to get hold of me. Actually, I'll give you my card before he leaves because we have other things to discuss. But, uh, uh, Jeff, we have other things to discuss. So I'll make sure you get one of my cards too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um so um, you know you, you know where you know where kind of where I'm coming from, so do we do we have more to discuss here? You know, do, do we want to brainstorm about, you know, is, is the long term model to wire up graphite to the vectorizer? Is that where we show that this code um, shows value in the long term? Is it wiring up to the vectorizer? Okay. I mean, it seems like it's easier to come up with examples for vectorizer stuff than nested loops. And, you know, we, we certainly... That's what you want you examples. Know. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah. Why the current vectorizer data dependence analysis is not good enough? Oh, God, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the current alias analysis that we feed no, into the vectorizer? The dependence, data dependence oh, analysis. Oh, oh. Um, well, yeah, that's... An al well, so the dependence analysis in, in relation to the alias analysis. Okay. Um, I don't know what our dependence analysis is doing right now. I have tried very hard not to look at that through the years. <laughs> so the only value of hooking the graphite to the vectorizer is for graphite to prepare the loop mm -hmm. to be vector, vectorized. So uh, it can do loop distribution mm -hmm. and make one part of the loop uh, parallel. 
And the other part that you, like, yeah, you have your cereal and, and split it up. Yeah, right. yeah. So that's, from my perspective, the only uh, value of adding this uh, link in between the two. So preparing the loops to uh, to be better vectorized. Well, yeah. Because right now, just looking at the, the well, just looking at the innermost loop or the out, outermost uh, whatever uh, vectorization we are doing, we are still doing it with the current data dependence analysis. Yeah. Well, there was some that claim we're not doing enough of it. <laughs> In fact, most would, most would claim that. Okay, so again, we is that me? <laughs> what, what cases did the, the previous um, loop nest optimizer pick up? Did, no idea. Did we, I mean, because we didn't, I mean, we can't really tore something out to replace e it with right? Yeah, we tore, we, I know we tore something out. I don't know how good it was. It only did a couple of things. I so mean, but, but that was the problem. I mean, it, it was an initial thing that I, I think Zenyak and Danny and, and, and I, to some extent, worked on. It was specific for the, the, the was it the interchange bits? There was just a couple of things. There was discussion about should we do something? I mean, again, like IBM's Excel high level loop optimizer, which is one of the best high level loop optimizers there is with the, you know, the, you know, the module transformations and everything. And then Graphite came along. IBM was also, I mean, not, not because IBM went to a, a polyhedral model, but why, you know, That's implement something that was, you know, last, you know, decade solution as opposed to just starting to do, you know, the solution that at least, I mean, it was, it was, it was experimental, it still is experimental, but it's believed to be the direction to go. But it was, it was simply a matter of, um, with it, the previous type of loop transformation, even that IBM implemented, it's a matter of just picking off loop transformation. Okay, we need to do a loop distribution. We need to do a loop fusion. We need to do a you know this sort of tiling. We need to do a loop skewing. And it's just this and this and this and all these different individual things. And the problem that polyhedral is trying to solve is an ordering problem. Once you get a large number, of these similar to the patch ordering problem for optimization in general, because they interact with one another. And the hope with polyhedral is that you transform into this other space and you perform all of these transformations with the schedule simultaneously and in innately in the appropriate order transform out. So it was a preliminary but incomplete implementation in the original GCC high level loop optimization that was trying to pick off a couple of the loop transformations that were necessary to spec and a couple of other benchmarks just because you know GCC could be more competitive with um, you know with proprietary commercial compilers at that point. So so a good target rich environment since you say that um, IBM in uh, Excel compiler um, so what I should look for um, is cases where our, the, the developers suggest that the, um, the loop nest optimization from Excel is better. Um, vectorization is, is actually going to be kind of more the end result. Either vectorization or cache behavior of the loops. Okay. Um, well, the, the, the loop transformation is what, an, is, is what gets you your better cache behavior. Yeah. Well, but, but also, I should you know, mention, right, you know, use this as a promotion. For the people who didn't attend my talk in the morning, that IBM contributed <laughs> a Power AIX system in addition to the Power Linux system that's already in the GCC compile form, and I have the Excel compilers installed there. So for people who want to run, I mean, it's on Power, not x86, but who want to experiment with the Excel compilers, and I, it's the latest one, so I think it has the same, you know, the whatever polyhedral transformations are in the standard commercial release. You could use that to compare the code generation of GCC and Excel and see what sort of transformations are possible. I think for your customers, that's probably going to be more interesting than x86 anyway. Well, <laughs> power. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, it's it, we've got both. Okay. We go both ways. No, I mean, I'm saying that you know, not not the, right. The yeah. He's, he's got a significant contingent that cares about power. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What in the? Yeah. I have no idea what's going on here. What makes the beeping sound? It's my laptop. Look on the screen. Presentation mode. <laughs> or maybe it's, it's, it's the beep. Get off. Get off. Stop. Quiet. <laughs> 
So I didn't really have any more material. I just wanted to get some discussions on how we're going to go forward. So uh, thanks for coming. Unless y'all have more questions or comments. Um, well, I think Kevin is kind of interested in it. So we might look into some of it. It'd be appreciated. That means, uh, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so when we start seeing mail from Joel, we'll know. <laughs> That's why he's here taking furious notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I nominate my employees. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, actually, knowing that helps because when we see mail from you, Joel, yeah. we won't ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> As often. Well, yeah. <laughs> or, or you mean nasty. Yeah. yeah. So, how much can you express in CNC plus plus as opposed to format that allows. I would think it's pretty hard to, to express you know, things with real large, uh, large thickness in, uh, in, uh, 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 with uh, C and still be able to. to, to well, yeah, and that, and that is the key, is the alias analysis. Fortran kind of makes all the perfect decisions if you're a compiler writer. It makes it very, very easy. C makes it virtually impossible. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's not e even close to enough. So in terms of poly, because most of the work that you're doing is on using Dragon Egg, that's the real interesting examples that you're I got some real, real and he's saying if you need Fortran, are you using Fortran with Dragon Egg, or you have examples? I mean, yeah, because I'm talking about LDM. Yeah, yeah, yes. So, so, sorry, guys. Um, so, technically, you're, you're done. But, oh. however, uh, there's a break until quarter two. So uh, we're, we're close. We're just discussing, so. <laughs> no, actually, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.